So this question comes from Focus Monster. Uh, what is the best online resource for a beginner who wants to learn Linux? Maybe you can name one source of free material and one paid source. Um, I'm already doing some basic stuff for work, but I would like some practice labs or problems to fix in addition to reading books and watching training videos. I know I can search for this myself online, but my problem is not a lack of resources, but rather an abundance and not knowing where my efforts would be best placed. I have watched your videos on Linux. Thank you for them. So that's a big old question. So Linux, where's the best place to go for Linux education online? And that is one of the weird things. One of the weird things we find in the tech world is that if you want to learn coding, if you want to learn coding, there's just a crap ton of information online. If you want to learn sysadmin stuff or networking stuff, yeah, not so much. Not so much. I don't know why that is. It is kind of weird, right? Uh, so most of those things that you have to pay for. What I would honestly say with Linux is the best free online resource for Linux is Google. <laughs> Google. Uh, you know, I talked about this before. I said this about 20 times today already in my other videos. But the big thing with technology is figuring out what problem you want you want to solve and then solving that problem. The big problem that a lot of folks have when they go into Linux is that they overthink it. And I know I had that problem. I personally had that problem, right? I was an, NC, as an MCSE 4.0. Uh, I went through the MCSE 2000 training. I had been in the Microsoft world for like 10 years before I bothered learning Linux. And so when I dove into Linux, I went into Linux with the mindset of the Microsoft world, where when you install a Microsoft server, Active Directory... Uh, you have Active Directory, you have SMB, you have Routing Remote Access, you have uh, you have IIS. Basically, you install a Windows Server, and you have to know a whole bunch of stuff from the get-go because so much is already installed on the Windows Server. With Linux, it's not the same way. I mean, depending on what distribution of Linux you use, I mean, you may not have SSH installed, you may not even have FTP installed. Basically, with a lot of Linux distributions, uh, if you do the server version, you get the command line. You get a little blinking command line. You get the kernel. You get the file structure. You get some very basic components that, that makes it all work. Uh, but otherwise, you literally have to install everything else. That's one of the reasons why Linux, in a lot of ways, is more secure than Windows. Is simply the more the more functionality an operating system has, uh, by definition, the more vulnerabilities there are. So you you can't hack the FTP. Uh, component if FTP isn't installed. Uh, you can't do a brute force attack against SSH if SSH server isn't installed, right? So that's the thing with Linux is basically you get a much more blank slate of a box and then you start adding functionality. So when you say Windows Server, when you when you buy a Windows operating system or you buy Windows Server, it is it's a server operating system plus all the file sharing components, plus the backup, plus the routing remote access, plus Active Directory, plus this, plus that, plus the other thing. Uh, when you install Linux, uh, you get a little blinking cursor most of the time. Uh, so what you really need to do then is once you figure out how to move through the file structure, once you figure out how to make directories and delete directories and do bash and vim and v or whatever the hell you want to use, then you just have to sit there and you have to figure out what do I want to do. It's like, okay, I've got this Linux box. What do I need to do? Uh, okay, so I need to be able to remotely administer this Linux box. And then you go to Google and go remotely administer Linux box. And it'll say SSH, dumbass. And you go, oh, set up SSH. And then you set up SSH. And they're like, okay. Well, that allows me to remotely get to the files, you know, to, to manipulate it. But I can't upload files. So, ooh, I need to do FTP. So, what? I need to do FTP server. So, you go... Linux FTP server, and then they'll come up with VS FTPD and Pro FTPD or whatever else, and you go, that one. And then you install that, and then you figure out how to configure it. And you're sitting there with that, and then you're like, oh, I need a backup, or I need to do this to do that. And then you add functionalities. And so these are all additional things. So that's where I would say for online free, basically it's just Google. Google, yeah. And it's also, that's the thing, is what distribution do you use? So Ubuntu's, Ubuntu's documentation is fabulous. They're online man pages really are fabulous. Uh, I don't know about CentOS or Arch or any of these, because remember, there's distributions, so different distributions, there's different commands, uh, apt-get and Ubuntu, I guess, yum, is it yum in uh, Red Hat or CentOS? Um, so you figure out your distribution, 
and then and then you just do the Google search. Now, in order the paid version, what I would say the best way to start for from the the paid part is I would all I would honestly say everybody laughs at me with those dummies books. I used to have the dummies books in the background. Everybody used to give me crap. Let me tell you, especially with something like uh, like Linux, just getting a good old fashioned dummies book. I think this will be the best whatever it is twenty twenty five dollars that you ever spent. You just go, you get the dummies book, it, it'll tell you how, how to move through the file structure, it'll tell you about Vim or V or the, the basic file editors. Again, especially when you're starting out, you don't have to, you don't have to start with the best file editor, everybody's going to argue. Like arguing about file editors in, in Linux is like filing, arguing about antivirus in Windows. Everybody has their own opinion. Um, but the important part is that you just figure it out, that you figure out how to modify INI files, that you figure out how to, to do this stuff. And then once you figure it out, then you talk to other people, you figure out what they like, you do the Google searches, and you, you keep going. Uh, so, yeah, so I would argue Linux for dummies, that's going to be the best, what is $27 you ever spent. I would argue start with Linux for dummies, then from Linux and dummies as you're experimenting, do Google and go from there. Um, I just don't know of any on the online resources the same way for like learning Node.js or Java or anything like that. Uh, so that is the way that I would go. And that is the way that I would go. Dummies, dummies for the win. D that's how you know you're dealing with a real professional. That's how you know when you're dealing with a real professional. You're dealing with real professionals. Real professionals don't have a problem in the world going through a dummies book. It's the noobs, right? Because let me tell you, like a lot of people get worried about dummies books. Oh, what 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 will people think about me if I use a dummies book? Here's how you can tell the difference between a real professional professional and a noob. If the person gives a shit what you think, they're a noob. <laughs> That's your solved, right? <laughs> when I'm sitting there starting through a dummies book, here's the deal. I've got a client. They're going to pay me when I solve the problem. The faster I solve the problem, the quicker I get the money. So if the dummies book allows me to solve that problem quicker, I'm going to use the dummies book. What you think about me using a dummies book? Are are you writing me a check? No, fuck off. So I like dummies books. I really do. They were great. Um, and you know, most things nowadays you don't need dummies books, especially especially for coding. A lot of the, a lot of the coding stuff, dummies books have gone by the wayside. But if you're if you're going back to just to pure good old fashioned sysadmin, uh, sysadmin networking that kind of stuff, it, dummies books still still are a good way to go. So that's what I would say. Uh, if you have a question for me, want me to respond to a comment, uh, whatever else, think about joining SiliconDiscourse.com. And with that, I'll see you at the next video.